Hello everyone, and welcome back to IMO Reviews. It's another episode of Hot Takes, and this time it's the Wet n Wild edition. I asked you for your hot takes on who you thought was an overrated actor or actress. If your take is too hot for my liking, this pint of water will be going over my head. The things we do for views and likes on YouTube, which, yep, that is your reminder, please do hit those magic buttons down below. And of course, I'd like to say a big thank you for those of you who did contribute. There was loads. I actually couldn't get everybody in there, so I do apologise if I didn't get you in the list. There were just too many on this occasion. So let's get into your hot takes. Some of them doubled up or said the same person, so I will be grouping them together. Starting with, I love him, but Keanu Reeves. And someone else also put, Keanu Reeves, I feel bad saying it because he seems like a really sweet guy, but yeah, he's just boring. Yeah, I think that's fair enough to say. So far, the water is staying on the ground. I'm right there with you. I do like Keanu Reeves, but actually, I, I think it's more his charm and his likeable nature than it is his acting ability. But he is fantastic at martial arts. He is very cool to watch when you're looking at some of the stunts that he does. That's awesome. And I also like him when he's doing voice work as well. I thought he was a great addition to Toy Story 4. Next one is Cara Delevingne. She nasty. I don't know about this one. I haven't seen her in enough things to really form an opinion on her yet. She was awful in Valyrian, I'll say that much. But I can't say I've really seen her in anything else. And maybe it's just because I'm a guy, but I, I wouldn't describe her as nasty, that's for sure. No water. The next one is Anya Taylor-Joy. Pretty face. Zero emotion. You happy? That's cold. Yep. Yeah, that's cold. As you can tell, I couldn't disagree with you more about Anya Taylor-Joy. Personally, I think she is one of the biggest stars on the rise at the moment. I think she's got a huge future ahead of her. She blew my socks off in The Queen's Gambit. She was the best thing about that god-awful New Mutants movie that came out. Yeah, I just see that one differently to you, I'm afraid. Next up is Timothy Chalamet and Jennifer Lawrence. Snooze. Timothy Chalamet, I'm right there with you. I really do wish that boy could just Stop being so bloody mopey all the time and be a little bit energetic in his performances. He just seems hell-bent on doing this all the time. <sighs> yeah, it's not really doing it for me, but what's annoying about it is that I think there's an excellent actor in there and we're just not seeing it. Jennifer Lawrence, on the other hand, she's a bit hit and miss for me. More so miss than she is hit. Next up, and it's another double, Scarlett Johansson. When she's good, she's incredible. But there's several duds like Ghost in the Shell that she really failed to offer anything to. And someone else put, Scar jo, she is the female Ryan Gosling. They get great roles only to offer zero emotion. Shots fired. I think both of those comments were fair though. There are movies where I've seen Scar jo and I've thought, eh, not your best work. And then I've seen times where I've thought, my God, this woman doesn't get enough love. She's the greatest actress on the planet. Jojo Rabbit being the first one that comes to mind. But yes, Ghost in the Shell, <sighs> not a good movie. Just watch the anime, it's so much better. The next one is, I don't get the hype with Harry Styles. His music's good, his acting isn't. <laughs> Thank you for saying it for me. <laughs> I'm yet to see him do anything in a movie that really captures my attention and makes me sit up and say, we're onto something here. The next one hurts my soul, but here we are. Christian Bale is a phenomenal actor, but he's the worst Batman. Cheers. Oh, that one was worse. I thought it'd be better. It was worse. It was definitely worse. I will agree with you here, I don't think Bale is the best Batman. For me, it's Conroy, it just is. I know that's sort of a cop-out because he only does the voice, but my God, does that voice really just perfectly fit Batman? And I think it's also elevated by the fact that I think Mark Hamill is arguably the best Joker we've ever had. Same reasoning, the voice is perfect and I feel like it fully understands what that character is. But is Bale the worst Batman? No, not for me. The bottom two for me would have to be George Clooney and Val Kilmer. And I don't actually hate Val Kilmer's performance. I can definitely see what he was going for. I just think the rest of the movie, 
yeah, doesn't really match his tone. Clooney, on the other hand, he, he cannot stop that head from wobbling. It's really annoying. And he's got that shit-eating Nespresso George Clooney grin the whole time. Yeah, for me, it's Clooney. Next up is another double. Heath Ledger was great in The Dark Knight, but it is overrated. And someone else also put, I've never liked Ledger's Joker, dot, 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 runs away. Don't run away too far, because you'll miss the show. Ah. What am I doing? I don't know. Uh, I am okay. I promise. This isn't a mental breakdown. I swear. Just sheer stupidity. That's all. Heath Ledger as the Joker. Well, in his own words. You've changed things. Forever. We'd never seen the Joker in that way before, and it just blew everybody's socks off. It's such a method performance that it's a little bit scary at times. But I do agree with you on one thing. I feel like there are a lot of people out there who have just accepted that that is it. That, that is the best performance we will ever, ever see from the Joker, and there's no point trying to ever do better. I frankly disagree. I think we're barely scratching the surface with this guy. Let's have as many different variations and renditions of the guy, because there is so much you can do with the Joker. It doesn't always have to be Batman related. It doesn't always have to do the same old thing. You can do a full-blown horror movie with the Joker if you wanted to, and it would be creepy as hell. I think he is such a malleable character that offers such interesting conversation that I think it's kind of short-sighted to just say, nope, that's the best we'll ever do. There will be someone one day who tops that performance. Next up is, Edward Norton is a better Hulk than Mark Ruffalo. No water on that one. I completely agree with you. Mark Ruffalo's Hulk kind of disappoints me, if I'm being honest, because in my mind, the Hulk is fun and exciting. He's going to break stuff and smash a truck in half and have a fight with something that's sort of on the same level as him. And it's going to be somewhat resemblant to a Godzilla King Kong fight, if you will. That's what's fun about the Hulk for me. I want that smash and bash and arr, aggression. I don't necessarily want him wearing a hoodie and eating burritos and stuff. I don't really get what Marvel are trying to do with him. Next up is... Every Chris, except Evans, they're all one note. In the great words of Alan Partridge, Can I just shock you? I'd even chuck Evans in there with the rest of them. Come on, admit it. He only does the same thing as well. I don't really love any of the Chris's, Hemsworth, Pratt, or Evans. If I had to pick a favourite, it would probably be Pratt. He can make me laugh the most out of the three, especially in Parks and Rec, and he is such a lovable character. The next one is, Ben Affleck is better behind a camera than he is in front of it. I like this one because I really couldn't figure out if this was like a diss or a compliment. It's kind of both. And I would tend to agree with you. Apart from Dogma, yeah, I do generally speaking prefer his directed work than his acting work. The next one changes the game a little bit. Can't think of an overrated, but Brie Larson is definitely underrated. People can't look past the Captain Marvel stuff. I like this one, it's cute. While I'm here being nihilistic and burning the world down, someone out there is just, you know, trying to restore the peace. I like that. What's the opposite of soaking myself with water? Uh, drying myself? There we go. If any of you are sitting there adamant that Brie Larson is a terrible actor and you can't understand how and why she got the role of Captain Marvel, sit yourself down, watch a movie called Room. All of your answers are right there. The next one is... Natalie Portman. I don't hate her, and I like some of the movies she's in, but she has zero range, Black Swan included. This might surprise you, but I actually agree. I think I am a little bit biased towards Natalie Portman because, well, I fancy the pants off her, basically. When I saw she had big muscles in Thor Love and Thunder, I didn't know whether I should be jealous or turned on, and in the end, it was a bit of both. But my God, she is really, really one note. The standout performance for me would have to be her childhood performance in Leon. She's very good in that and it you can definitely see why there was a lot of hope put on her shoulders for a bright future and hey she has had a very bright future. But is she world class? Is she one of the greats? Not in my book she isn't. The next one is Johnny Depp. I just don't get it. He's been playing a bumbling mess for the past 20 years. True. He has. But if you look at some of his earlier stuff, a lot with Tim Burton when he was Edward Scissorhands and stuff, there's some really good, unique, different performances there. But yeah, 
As soon as Jack Sparrow hit, he just rode that train to the grave, didn't he? The next one is, I've never understood the appeal of Sarah Jessica Parker. She's pretty to look at, but she has the acting ability of a wet mop. I can't really comment on this one too much because I actually haven't seen much of her work. I've never sat and watched a full episode of Sex in the City. I've maybe seen scenes of it because my sister watched it and I would have come in from football practice and that's what would have been on the telly and I'd have gone, no, that shit's on. And I'd have gone upstairs and played the Xbox. So I don't want to say yes or no on this one too much simply because mm, she's just not really in anything that I would watch. The next one is... Enter the Dragon isn't actually that good. It's got great characters, but poor action that doesn't hold up to Lee's filmography. Be water, my friend. Oh, that was horrible. I, I didn't even really do myself very well. Oh, God. <laughs> Now this might be favouritism and bias speaking, but Enter the Dragon was probably the very first Bruce Lee movie that I saw. I love it to a point that I even have a picture of it on my wall. I just fell in love with Bruce Lee from that moment. I just thought, who is this insanely cool guy that is doing all this insane stuff with nunchucks? So that really was the movie that opened my eyes to the idea of fighting being a possibility in a film. And I know that sounds stupid, I should have said skilled fighting, an actual martial arts, not just your traditional bish bash bosh, logic doesn't exist stuff. No, it dawned on me that you can learn how to do the nunchucks and you can be awesome at that. But I haven't seen it in years, I probably really should give it a revisit. Maybe it doesn't hold up anymore, but in my heart of hearts, it's a personal favourite for many reasons. And the last one is Giancarlo. Esposito. He's constantly typecast as being an arrogant villain, and I'm tired of it. <sighs> I do kind of get what you mean. Yeah, it is getting a little bit run of the mill for him now. That he would talk with such cadence like this and be somewhat patronizing to you who is not an intellect like he. But I don't know if that's necessarily his fault or if that's the director and the casting director's fault because there are a lot of movies earlier on in his career where he really mixed it up and really shows his acting chops. Do the Right Thing being the biggest standout in my mind. I really do love him in that movie. Every time I'm watching it, I'm just smiling from ear to ear going, that's Gus Fring. He's going to grow up and own a chicken shop. I still love him nonetheless. And that is that on your hot takes. I should bloody well think so. I am drenched head to toe now. Thank you so much for contributing to the video and watching the video. Please do hit the like button and the subscribe button if you haven't. Please do hit the comment section as well. Are there any hot takes that you wildly agree with or wildly disagree with? Take care and I look forward to seeing you on the next review.